let's let's go ahead and move on to this uh <laughs> the fifth topic of the day uh while they're placing their bets and all that good stuff uh, there we go uh, there you go it's, it's official <laughs> and uh we're coming to uh one take big dog first on this one right here and you actually i'm, I'm excited man because you actually did see the recently see the first film recently um uh, but this is from oh, deadline wait. Blade Mogul Mowgli Helmer Basan Tariq is mm. Marvel's choice to direct new film starring Mahershala Ali as the iconic vampire hunter. <laughs> and again, guys, if, excuse me, if you're watching this uh, via live on the replay, there's a link down to this article down in the description box for you to read at your own leisure. And also, please let us know what you think down in the comment section. But it just goes on to say. Oh, this came out on my birthday last week. Exclusive. After a thorough search that involved months of meeting a slew of talent, Marvel's new Blade movie has found its director. I don't even know who this guy is. While a deal is not yet done, sources tell Deadline that Basam Tariq, best known for directing Riz Ahmed film Mogul Mongli, is in talks to him the new adaptation of the popular comic with Mahershala Ali. It was exactly the first thing I said. Uh, Marvel has no comment on this. And if I go to his filmography right here on IMDb, this is what the gentleman looks like. Like I said, I've never heard of him before. I don't know. Oh, wait. I, go back to him. That's him? No, that's no. not Riz Ahmed. No, yeah. Oh, okay. I was about yeah. to say. <laughs> um, and so where the hell is this stuff? You don't even got a picture on IMDb. Yeah, got, wait a minute. No, <laughs> where is his work? Am I tripping? I clicked no, you know, I I the movie. That's what I'm tripping. Okay. I, there we go. Let me. There that's is, what I'm yeah. trying to do. Okay. I'm like, bro, you don't got no. So I, I'm just trying to see what he's. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. So, um, yeah, I've I've never heard of any of this. It's just a bunch of shorts, documentary. <laughs> I don't know. This must be a good movie. Um, but we'll see. One take, big dog. How you feeling about this, man? You know, do you know who this guy is? And are you excited for him possibly directing the rebooted Blade with Mahersh Ali? Uh, but well, I'm 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 gonna keep it real. I know I don't know who he is, so they can't. My excitement for the film can't change if I haven't seen any of the previous work, and I don't know who he is. I'm right. looking forward to the Blade film strictly because of the first one was so good. So I really think you are gonna have to do some stuff. Uh, I'm kind of disappointed that this film's not rated R strictly because of how the how the first one played out and how how much blood. I mean, the vampires you don't have blood in a vampire movie. It's kind of weird. So yeah, I don't. Right. I, they gonna have to give me another announcement for something to give me hype. I love Mahershala Ali. I think he, he's great, uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing him uh, uh, be Blade. But just like I said, after seeing that first film, my expectations for this movie is pretty high, especially because it's in the MCU and there's so much stuff they can do with it. But with no rated R, I don't know this director. You gonna have to give me something. You have to give me something. Right on, and uh, Mara Sharice, I want to thank you for so much for the ten dollar uh cash shop. Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate it. Uh, Elliot, how you feeling about yes, this? Uh, I'm kind of like with Big Dog, man. I, this is uh, listen. I think uh, it was Lamont or Larry brought it up early in regards to the to the uh, the talent that Marvel likes to bring in. They like to bring in these smaller unknown. You know, who was the Russo brothers before? Captain America, who was, you know, uh, you know, some of the other people that they've been working with, uh, with the, the Ant-Man stuff, uh, uh, Peyton Reed and all this, like they were, I don't say they were nobodies, but they didn't have a name. They didn't have much mm -hmm. as far as, you know, what they did after Marvel. So I had to assume that this, this, this gentleman, the movie that he did direct, Riz Ahmad, uh, must have been something that Kevin Feige saw in that film or something that he saw in one of the documentaries, or maybe he came in with an incredible pitch to one take. Maybe he said, I can make this work PG 13, no blood and make this blade movie the greatest thing ever. So Man. maybe that's what sold them. Uh, but outside of that, I don't know what spoke to <laughs> what it was with Marvel. That was like, that's our guy. That's the guy that we want to direct the, the first blade MCU film. So, I don't know, man. This is this. I don't want to say I'm nervous because I, I know we talked about it a couple months ago. The writer, she's a very accomplished writer. She was uh, part of the Watchmen series, the uh, that writer's room, and she has some other good credits to her name. So sometimes the writing can help the direction, especially if he's and, and also to the beauty about Marvel. And they just mentioned it with the young lady that did Black Widow. They tend to kind of help directors out in certain things that they might not be good at. Like they they had some action director, they had the Russo brothers and some other people help her kind of edit the uh the, the final production of Black Widow. So I'm assuming they're not gonna just throw the keys at him and just say good luck and we'll catch you in eight months. Right. I, they're gonna probably help him out and you know kind of nurture him within the process. And and again, I, I'm hoping that 
PG-13 vampire movie with no blood. We'll, we'll see, man. I'm hoping that uh, Mahershala Ali makes his appearance, uh, you know, in a moon night first or something else. And we can get, you know, see how they're going to do things. But we'll see, man. And Kevin Feige, we trust, right? Yeah, right on. Yeah. Uh, Lamont. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm, I got to agree with these fellas, man. But I, I will say this. I trust Marvel. Mm -hmm. I, I trust Marvel and... So far, they haven't let me down with these smaller directors, producers, writers. And to piggyback one take, not only is this going to be PG-13, but you guys are going to be looking at one-fifth of the Midnight Suns, which they've already said Marvel is leading up to that. And I do not see how you do a non-rated R Midnight Suns movie. And you've already got Moon Knight coming out which is going to be another person on that Midnight Suns team. I don't know how you're going to do this without having gore, gut splattered on the sidewalk. I don't know. But I trust Marvel. <clears throat> and I'm interested to see where they go with this because they've made some hires in the past that had me a little like, really, what you're doing? And then the movie turns out to be well. So I'm going to trust Marvel until they prove me otherwise. Right on, right on, right on. And guys, y'all help me reach a milestone. We I'm at 239, 236 now. I think we just hit 241 nice. people in the chat. Let's try to let's try to get 250 people in here at one time. The only way that can possibly happen is if you hit the thumbs up button. Mm -hmm. Right now, I have 159 thumbs up and I have 235 people watching. So please, uh, you know, it's free. Just mm -hmm. click the button, you know, just click the thumbs up and <laughs> yeah. that'll send it out to more people to click on the video. I work uh, pretty hard on this thumbnail. I do not care yes. about self pubbing, but I wanted people to see this. I'm like, damn, I got to click on it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, <laughs> guys, please, please. Thumbnails are the number one important thing for YouTube uh, yes. video. So and, please. and people tell B. Avery once he start working with that Mac, his thumbnail game is going to take <laughs> half the amount of time it takes that he's doing right now. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, 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 I'm quite proud of that. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> but hey, anyway. you, you do a hell of a job on them thumbnails, brother. But when Brent, you're I gotta ask, was it Vin Diesel, man? Did he did he push you to get that <laughs> thumbnail <laughs> game up? Was it Vin? <laughs> Vin Diesel, right? did not go there with you. It's okay, man. It's okay if he pushed yeah. you because of family. Yeah. It's family, you know, man. family, Those are yeah. epic thumbnails, by every the day. way. Epic right. thumbnails. Right yeah, right. Larry, how are you feeling about this new director? Man? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I've been looking forward to this. I love the Blade movies for a long time. Um, I I am perfectly okay and, and actually happy that they are bringing in these young directors. I think this is what DC should be doing. They should be finding mm. these guys that are young, talented, hungry, and then bring them in and develop them. Because I can tell you right now, any director who has made one or two feature films that maybe have had five, you know, five million, six million, ten million dollar budgets, they're going to be a little terrified when they come in and say, "Here's a hundred million dollars." They're going to be a little frightened. So you got to put a good team around them. But you find the people that have the talent that can do it, and then you and then you 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 let them, you develop them, and then you keep them for years. People don't forget who helped them in their early days and they come back to them, you know, and I mean, everybody, to be honest, everybody was a no name director at some point, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, think about M. Night Shyamalan. We saw him in nothing. And then all of a sudden, boom, dude dropped six cents and then unbreakable. And then he just never stopped, you know, and before we didn't know who he was. I mean, it's like, it's been like that for everybody that's been out there. So the only time that it's not like that is when you have a when you have an actor who decides he then or she then wants to also direct and then you stay you may not even see their early directorial debuts so oftentimes they start directing tv episodes <clears throat> and to get their you know to get their feet wet and then they finally drop their you know their uh their feature debut <clears throat> you know so but I'm looking forward to it. I hope DC does this same thing. I hope DC runs up all just runs up all through NYU and USC and, and American University and all the other great film schools out there and and plucks out all the directors that are that all the directors in waiting. Just grab them and 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 develop them. I got a so, question for, for the panel if you don't mind be over. No, you got uh, go ahead. Also, you got a uh, super chat too. <clears throat> Uh, oh well, let me let me go let me go ahead and grab that first because I don't uh, thank you. I think I saw it and, and missed it. Uh, is it D Weave? 
I would rather watch the return of Cottonmouth. Is a, bro, I, I I agree with you on that one hundred percent. I think I'm. I think we're the only person in the world that feels it. Yes. Yes. Thank you for that. I do appreciate the super chat. Yeah, D. Weave. I, I mean, Mahershala is cool. I'm just still not in love with him as Blade. I, I want Wesley back, but that's just me. I think somebody else was saying that in the chat. Uh, mm -hmm. But thank you so much for the super chat and thank you for mm -hmm. uh, one take big dog for calling that out. Is that the only one that I missed? Yeah, super chat. Okay, so go ahead. You know, my problem is, B, is that I think, and I've said this before, I think if they were going to go with someone like Mahershala, they should have just brought back Wesley because I think both of them at about this point the same are too age. old. Yeah, he's yeah, up they're about the same age. Yeah. age. Mm -hmm. So I think they're both too old. Would you be okay if they brought Wesley as Whistler? Uh -uh. Uh, I mean, Alex, I have no choice but to accept it, but it's not, it's not my first choice. I just want Wesley back as the character. That's just, as a, that's just where I'm at right now. Yeah. Uh, but once yeah. you was that, was you asking the question? My yeah, I, uh, I was wondering, <laughs> do you guys think Marvel brings in these like kind of like no name directors so they don't have like super, like, you, mm, I'm trying to make sure I, I had to pay, right somebody had to pay them so much, like. That and the fact that they can kind of like really direct how the film is going to go because you know it's like you get one of these big name directors in they just like hey, I want to do everything kind of my way and like these kind of like yeah, smaller probably directors, some of that yeah you know that you can kind of like guide them in a certain you know certain way to, to I, keep everything in one take I think yeah. it's definitely part with the pay for sure I mean it's a business that's definitely mm -hmm. part of it part 100%. of it with the pay I think that would be number one and the second part of what you said i think would be number two okay. um b b you know that because even a big name if you was to bring in a big name and you paid him all this money you still have to answer to what kevin feige and the higher-ups at marvel want in terms of the direction of the movie and you might get a lot of lip from the big names versus yeah, when you go with the, yeah yeah so mm -hmm. i think that one a definitely is the pay Okay. But here's the thing, I think, too, if you bring in someone young, like if you're doing the Blade thing, let's say that you plan on doing, let's say, two or three Blade movies, or maybe you're going to do the Blade movie and then, you know, the, the uh, you know, the something else. Mm -hmm. And you want to keep this guy on for all those projects. If you bring in somebody who's young, mm -hmm. who's who's, you know, who doesn't have that deep of a resume, mm -hmm. you can bring him in and lock him up for two, three, four movies. And. You know, you may not be able to do that with somebody else. You, you know, somebody else is going to be like, yeah. if you really want to keep me for four movies, you know, you got to pay me like two hundred million dollars, right? Because yeah. I can't, I can't have my stuff locked down. <laughs> Netflix might want to offer me a hundred million dollars next year, and I can't be locked down to you guys. That's a hell of a paycheck. Yeah, yeah that's I mean, right. I'm looking at my man's uh, John Watts with the Spider-Man films, and what Marvel just gave him is Fantastic Four. So I think. What Marvel's doing, as we've seen with the Russo brothers, who were the Russos before they came into Marvel? They were doing episodes of, uh, you know, TV shows and and Marley and Me, and now they have their own studio. They work. They have a deal with Netflix. So, and, and like I said, John Watts is literally he has the keys to the Fantastic Four. So, they're doing it right, where they pick these young, talented actors that want to work within Marvel. And I think every besides, as we mentioned earlier, Alan Taylor, uh, Edgar Wright, and I think. Um, Ava DuVernay was like the only three directors that weren't able to mesh well with Marvel, mm -hmm. but we had 24 films and 24 different directors that have nothing but great things to say about the Marvel experience. So whatever they're doing, man, they they, they give the, the directors enough. Uh, they put them on a leash to a certain extent, but they give them a, enough room to kind of be who they want to be. Because again, you get a right. Chloe Chow doing Eternals. We got Dustin Crittin doing Shang-Chi. Shang we got him doing Blade. I mean, whatever they're doing they're doing it right man well I, I gotta i gotta ask this now since you brought it up Elliot. do y'all think that marvel will ever hire a james cameron or michael bay to do one of their films mm -hmm. and is that something that i would want to see <laughs> michael bay yes yeah. no michael bay for me no, I like Michael Bay. <laughs> okay. I like I like his no, I like his no, over no, the top no, ridiculousness. I not like for a Marvel it. movie. Not for that, a Marvel. That's what I don't want to see in Marvel. I don't want him yeah. to go crazy like that. Um, yeah. James Cameron, I would be okay, but they're not going to hire these dudes. Hmm. Neither one of them. They won't even hire them to bring donuts. Yeah. <laughs> who Who is the biggest clout director that Marvel has had prior that's to? I'm, I'm just trying question. to think. Um, I don't know. Josh Whedon. Josh Whedon. I would say, say he yeah. was maybe the Josh, most established at the time. That was most yeah, of TV James stuff. James Gunn. Yeah, I probably. Uh, yeah. James Gunn. 
Uh, well, James, want, James Gunner did what a slit like a horror film. And yeah, I was gonna say we do films. It depends yeah. on how you bounce Gun versus Josh Whedon. I yeah. mean, take you know. L last, uh, do I know the super chat? You do. Have yeah, oh yeah, there. you got a five dollar super chat. Yeah. All right, I can say be five dollars. Blade is immortal, so that an actor's age shouldn't be the problem. Uh, shouldn't That's exactly be that problem. why the age is the problem. Black That's don't crack. Exactly though, so. why? Be because okay. he's supposed to be immortal. You can't have a dude that in in a movie in 2022 it looks one way, and then when they do the next movie three years later, he's looking older because he's not supposed yeah. to age. Right so on. you need somebody like they should have they should have cast an actor for blade that was like 25 maybe 28 because then you could have gotten at least a good 20 decade. years out of that dude probably a decade right yeah. on what well, maybe I, a decade but you could have gotten you you could have legitimately have gotten if you got to do it like 25 28 you probably couldn't get at least like 10 years out of him without his look changing significantly mm-hmm and uh, I can say, B, thank you so much for the super chat. I do appreciate it. This is, this is my last question, and then we can move on unless y'all got something else. I'm just passionate about it. Which I'll say, well, short answer, well, kind of rhetorical. Would you say that the Secret Wars is one of the biggest stories in Marvel? One of them. And we know that they're going to eventually do that, especially with the way Loki ended. I think James Cameron would be perfect to direct a Secret Wars series. Um, because it would have to be like Infinity War and Endgame, where it's more than one film, maybe like mm -hmm. four or six. But James, I think James Cameron would be perfect for that. That's just my two cents. Um, you know, y'all can comment on that or, or ignore it if you want to. Hey, well, if James Cameron's directing that film, it's gonna take 30 years to make because he takes <laughs> forever to make movies. <laughs> Technology's not right, we gotta wait till 2029, and uh, I, I, it'll take forever, man. But it would be the best movie you've ever, ever, ever seen. But anyway, I, I, don't, I, don't, know, think I don't, don't think he'll mess well with Marvel and him being yeah, I, I, don't so. I don't either, but I, would, I wouldn't mind seeing the end product, which is why I mentioned him. I, I wouldn't mind seeing it, but it's just there's just too many potholes to get to that point and yeah, secret Peter? wars is definitely a top five source material oh. that that marvel has ever done definitely a top five yeah right on right on right on well uh